In this video, we're going to be taking a look around Paul High Street and we're going to be asking the question, is it really that bad? Everyone I've spoken to seems to have something negative to say about it. But before I do, I want to tell you a couple of interesting facts about Paul. It has one of the largest natural harbours in the world. It's actually the second largest. And underneath that harbour is one of Europe's biggest oil fields. You probably know that because you saw there was a small leak there recently. Anyway, let's go take a look around the high street. Okay, so I've arrived at the Dolphin Shopping Centre, which is at the top end of Paul High Street. And Paul High Street's quite unique because it goes all the way down to the harbour, kind of. And I'm gonna show you that in this video. We've got the Warhammer shop. There's a few of those over here. There's one of those in Bournemouth as well. And here we are, the top end of Paul High Street. There is the rest of the Dolphin Centre. Now, I can't really film in there. They get a bit funny about these sort of places, but I can tell you that it is pretty good in there, in my opinion. So this is the Kingland area, which is home to all the independent retailers around here. I think it's mostly independent, although I did spot a holiday shop there. But this looks really awesome, doesn't it? Let's have a little look, see what they've got. Green slade fish, fishmongers, breakburn, it's like some sort of clothing shop. Grounded coffee. Viper. Oh, this is a cocktail bar. Wow, these places look really awesome. Boiler room records. Okay. I didn't know half this was here, guys. Wild roots. But this one up here. This shop here, Restored Retro. And the one next to it has got something to do with Jay Blades. If you don't know who Jay Blades is, he's basically used to uh, present the repair shop. I think it was on BBC. Check out some of this stuff, Jay & Co. Wow. That's amazing. And then you've got Restored Retro next door. That's incredible. So anyone that I've spoken to about Paul High Street has always had something negative to say about it. And actually, if I'm honest with you, I think it's all right. Um, but you guys will have your own opinion. We've got more to see. It does change as we go down this end. It's all right, there's a lot more open here than there is in Bournemouth. But we're gonna make our way down now towards the harbour. Now, Paul High Street has a level crossing. Right in the middle of it, goes straight through. But what's interesting about this, there's a bridge here and people still wait here instead of walking over the bridge to go over. It's, uh, it's crazy. Okay, so on Saturday, it's on Paul High Street. You have this open air market. And you've got lots of different people selling different goods. Got a model, the Titanic there. It's quite good. Jewelry. Load of bedding, because you can't go wrong with a bit of fresh bedding. Or some dog blankets. And this market goes all the way down by the looks of it. Right. You are, mate. Little dash hand. Oh yeah. We've got the fruit sellers over here. And the hot dog and donut man, all right, mate? I've got to say, check out this uh, 
this Nero's coffee shop. That is a really cool building, isn't it? So the market continues, guys. And you'll notice how the high street starts to change now. And they've got a Robert Dice here. Now, I've got to say, before I moved to Bournemouth, I didn't know much about Robert Dice. It's actually a really good shop. and sells some really useful stuff. What are these guys selling? Oh, loads of cleaning stuff. Okay. And it's not a proper high street without a savers. Pound stretch out or a pound land. And just here we've got a place called Sweet Caroline's American Diner. I think this might be closed now by the looks of it. There's a big sign on the outside. Yeah, that's definitely closed. It's looking a little bit grubby inside, but it's still got all the old American style seats. Wow. That's a shame that's not open. As you can see, it's taken a bit of a bit of a turn now. And what was I saying about the Poundland? This is probably the smartest Poundland I've ever seen with the glass front. I'm not sure what this used to be. So if anyone knows, drop me a comment below. And we've got a closed shop over here. I've got to say, there's a lot more open here than there is in Bournemouth. Bournemouth has got a hell of a lot of closed shops. The only thing I can think is that the rates are just way too high over there. Cool, look at this shop over here. A hardware shop. The only other hardware shop I've seen is in Westbourne. Wow. Got all your basic stuff you need. They got everything. And in this little secluded spot, we've got, what's that say? Gina Lee's Italian restaurant. This place looks amazing. All right, so this part of the high street is uh, pretty uninspiring, to be honest with you. Definitely all the action is happening up at that end but we are going to continue and we're going to carry on and see plus i want to get a coffee i want to try coffee at a little coffee shop so hopefully i can find one of those i've just found a little alleyway called bowling green alley and the pool printmakers are down here apparently let's have a look Oh, wow. Okay. So this takes us close to the old town, which we are going to have a little look at that shortly. But let's carry on with the high street. Look at that. Wow. So this reminds me a little bit of Boscombe in the sense they got the artwork on the side of the buildings here. That is really cool by someone called PH Goss. And then just here, hopefully you can see that, there's a really old sign from back in the day. I can't make out what it says, I'm afraid, guys. Oh, they've got another boiler room records. Wow, they've got two of them. Rent must be cheaper down this end. Ah, this is cool, Sexfield's Models. Let's have a look here. Wow, look at some of this stuff. Wow, this is awesome. This looks like it's been uh, shut down for some time now. Futurees, fruiterees, shall I say, and green graces. Never heard of a fruiterea. Right, here we are, Paul Museum. Oh, it's not actually open, which is surprising, but you can see an old fire engine in here, guys. Paul Fire Brigade. Nice, and I've just seen somewhere where I can get a coffee, so I'm gonna go and check out this place, Tiramisu. Temporary sign, apparently. Coffee and patisserie. Let's go try it out. Okay, got the coffee. Let's take a seat on this bench and see how it tastes. There's the coffee shop there. Oh, that's delicious. So, coming down from the high street there, You've got the harbour there. That's where we're going to finish 
the video. And then this way takes you to the old town. So let's go and have a quick look. Um, I did do a live stream here, guys. So if you want to have a good look around, go check back through my live streams back from the summer. And you'll see, I think it's my very first one, actually. I um, had a little look around here. I'm going to show you because some of it is absolutely beautiful. The King Charles, 1770. This place looks really cool. In fact, it goes over there as well. <coughs> Excuse me. There's always people out here in the summer. Um, with it being a Saturday today, I'm sure it'll be busy here later too. Some of these buildings here are just exquisite. And I use that word rarely, but they are absolutely stunning. This here is a hotel that you can stay in. Just have a quick look at the inside. I did do this on my live stream, yeah, wow. Check that out, guys. That is just incredible. You're staying in a very nice place there. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it beautiful. Uh, this place is called a Hotel Du Vin and Bistro. Just so you know, that was a blooming lovely coffee. So definitely go check out that coffee shop. Right, this is St. James's Close. Right next to this big church. Look how beautiful this looks as you walk down. Got these old buildings, wow. Check out the old lamppost. Don't know if these still work. It has got a cable going to it, but they might have used to be um, like lanterns inside. This is pretty incredible, guys. Like I say, if you want to see, have a good look around, uh, take a look at my live streams, and you'll uh, you'll see the video on there, and I think you'll quite enjoy it. Okay, just walking back towards the high street, which is just there. I just wanted to show you this building, guys. Looks like it might have been an old mill or something. You can see all these doors. I just love the buildings here. They remind me of Weymouth. All right, I'm back round at the high street. That's where I had the coffee. And now this takes us all the way to Paul Quay, Paul Harbour. And this is where you can catch a boat over to Brown Sea, and I'll show you briefly. I've done a video on Paul Key, and I'll probably do another one this summer. But while I'm here, and before I finish the video off, I'll show you, look at this. We're all getting ready to go. Fortuna, Southampton. So these, all these boats, they take you out on various tours, or they take you over to Brown Sea Island, just over there. But this one here, it's just caught my eye, YE270. Wow, look at that. That's a, actually, that's a working, blimey, look at that guys. Is this like a working trawler? It's like a conveyor belt here, all the fish must just go into there. Yeah, look, there's loads of shells down there. That's really interesting. And there we are. That concludes my video on Paul High Street. Is it really that bad? You decide. Personally, I think it's all right. The top end of the street's got a lot going on. It does deteriorate as it comes down, but it isn't too bad. And when you compare it to how many shops are open in Bournemouth and how many are open in Paul, Paul is definitely the winner, in my opinion. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to click like and subscribe and I will hopefully see you on the next video. Take care.